Hey, so I'll make a quick video on my mid-max self generating warlock. So this build is extremely strong and I'll talk about it throughout the video. But first, I do want to give a, a shout out to the curse. This is the person who originally made the build. I'm just fully min-maxing it to the highest you can. So yeah, I'm currently at 1700 corruption as you can see. Um, and it's difficulty is really easy. I feel like I can easily push at least 2400 corruption, if not more. I'm um, not really sure how far I can go. We'll see. I'm pushing every single day on Twitch though, getting 400 to 500 corruption a day, and it still is pretty easy. And I still have a lot of upgrades to still get. So yeah, let me do a quick map showcase, explain the build real quick, and then explain what I changed to fully even max this build. So yeah, this is 100% 2k corruption viable, uh, no issue whatsoever. So one thing to note is the build is technically uh, bugged, which means it could be fixed in a future patch, but there was a patch yesterday and it wasn't fixed. Meaning it won't be fixed for at least for another week. So at least for one more week, you can still play this build. Um, but even then it might not be nerfed in a week. We don't know. You know, their stance on mid league balances. We'll find out though. But yeah, there's at least one more week of this build. If not more, maybe we'll be here for the rest of the season. Who really knows? since we're not really saying anything. But yeah, as you can see, you easily destroy monoliths in 1700. Uh, zero threat, zero issue. Um, if you're wondering, my jeweler time is roughly 10 seconds at the moment. And like I said, I still have a lot of damage upgrades to do. You know, mainly I'm missing crit multi for my weapon, which is like 20% more damage. So yeah, my jeweler time tier four is roughly like 10 seconds, which is quite impressive. While also being insanely tanky. So yeah, let's quickly talk about the build. So I'm not going to go over everything because the curse has a full guy on the build. I just want to go what I did to min max this build to its fullest. So, you know, first things I did was change the passive tree. So yeah, on the wallock tree, you really don't need these uh, ward decay threshold nodes. They're pretty useless for this build because you just have such a massive amount of water already that they essentially do close to nothing. Um, they're good if the build gets nerfed. So if the build gets nerfed, you probably would want to use these. But yeah, for now, these are useless. You just take points out and put them in something else. Personally, I put them in spell damage for curses. You can also max this out if you take three points out of a curse here. But the reason why I'm keeping poison here is because the cast speed is very, very nice. It allows you to quickly uh, ramp up because you need to reach 40 ignite stacks, which I'll talk about in a second. So yeah, you can max this out if you want for nine more spell damage for curses. Personally, I just have three points in here and I maxed out a curse here. Keep in mind currently, aspect of death is bugged. So do not take it as it does nothing for the build currently. If you could take it, you definitely would as it's 30% more damage. So outside of that, we are scaling our damage through crit multi nodes and necrotic resist and intelligence. That's our main sources of scaling. So we're grabbing you know, all the intelligent nodes where we can, crit multi nodes and necrotic resist on our gear and everywhere. Um, also to note, this 24% more damage um, is massive for the build. And we also get 50% more damage from Profane Veil vale with Scorn. So, the basic build rotation um, is you get 40 stacks of ignite, you press your fissure into bone curse, into veil. You should always be pressing bone curse because this thing is like literally instant cast, as you can see. So there's no reason to never not press this before entering the veil. So yeah, so you get 40 stacks of ignite, bone curse, fissure, there you go. Or fissure into bone curse, doesn't really matter because it's instant cast. But yeah, it's again. Fisher, Bone Curse, Veil. Then you want to stay in Veil for like four and a half seconds to five seconds. Um, I essentially want to leave right before the Fisher ends and then you can build up real quick and go again. And it's like a permanent, essentially uh, dodge on the Veil as well. And the rotation is really, really smooth. So yeah, outside of that, what else I've changed? Um, so this Warlock Tree, uh, the Alkalite, I think you can also get the armor here, which might be more EHP than this minion life now. I'm not too sure. I'll have to do the math on it, but I'm pretty sure this is more EHP, so I probably will switch to this. But yeah, outside of the Walker Tree, that's pretty much all I changed. I was taking out these Decay Thresh nodes, getting more end, more damage. Yep. And let's talk about the skills real quick and what I've changed here as well. So, with this, I'm not using this as a reverse skill anymore. The reason why is I just don't think it's that good. Um, Transplant is insanely strong, and I'll explain in a second, but yeah, this also wastes two points, which means you lose damage. Ideally, this is level 23. It's level 25 for me, because I'm using a plus three chest, but you'll see in the end game version, you only want a plus one chest. So yeah. If you take these nodes, you're essentially losing um, damage right here, which is, uh, what is it? Something like a, uh, 
it's double, so 32% more damage multiplier if you take these two nodes. So yeah, it's why I personally don't like this. You lose a lot of damage. You know, 32% DPS is a lot, especially in these high-end corruptions. So personally, I just don't think it's that good. You lose way too much damage, and the diversal skill just also just sucks, to be honest. Outside of that, the tree is largely the same. I have five points in here just because I have plus three in my chest. If I didn't have plus three in my chest, uh, this would only be three out of five. Fear Plague, pretty much the same tree. Nothing you can really change here. And just to explain the self ignite setup real quick. So you self ignite um, through Spirit Plague. So Spirit Plague uh, guarantees five bleed stacks on you whenever you cast it if you take these five points in examination. Now, you convert these bleed stacks into uh, ignite stacks through the melee and hubris. So now when we cast Spirit Plague, we get five ignite stacks and six because of our belt. But yeah, so you're guaranteed five ignite stacks with a chance of six every single time you use Spirit Plague because of melee and hubris. And why is that important? It's because of the belt. The belt gives you four to six spell damage uh, per ignite stack on you up to 40. Ideally, you really want this to be six. I don't like telling these belts and I've not seen a six, but yeah. Um, ideally, you do want this to be a six spell damage. So that is 240 flat spell damage, which is a ton. That is a lot of flat spell damage. So yeah, uh, that's the core of the build and how you're getting all the damage and how you self ignite. So these five points right here. But yeah, outside of that, this skill just debuffs enemies. So I did take three out of three as pestilence. So this is also kind of bugged, but it sometimes does work. I'm not really sure it makes it not work or does work, but sometimes you get stacks. Sometimes you don't. I've got like 13 stacks as before. I don't really know what makes it bug and not bug, but I think it is worth the points because it's not also put points in it anyway. And you also probably frailty with the skill. That's pretty much it for the skill. Go on, transplant last. So bone curse, the only thing I've really changed here, I put one extra point in Reaper's Mark. The reason why is this is technically more DPS. If you only have two points in Reaper's Mark right here, then this bone curse only lasts four, I mean mark for death only lasts for four seconds. The issue is your fissure lasts five seconds. So that means you're essentially uh, wasting one second of, a, well not wasting, that essentially means you have one second of no mark for death, which is just a DPS loss. So you put one point in, you get some more DPS. It's minor, but like I said, it has been maxed for a reason. And I took the coal nodes out of here to kill threshold nodes because I get it through my transplant. So that's how I able to get the points in here and here. So this is optional points. Uh, you can do whatever with here. These two points right here are useless because armor shred chance. Armor shred does nothing for this build. But these nodes are nice for clearing. It gives you really, really high uh, bone armor uptime, which is armor and damage reduction. So very, very nice. Um, I do think these are the best points, but feel free to experiment with these five points. You can do whatever you want with them. Um, if you didn't take transplant, then you, you would want to get the kill threshold, uh, kill threshold, and that's where you would put your last five points. So profane veil real quick. The profane veil tree is largely the same. I actually do think in the fifth point in here is worth it though. And I might play around with this uh, later on. I'm pretty sure I'm going to take two points out of uh, this and the matter reduction to get the fifth point in stream profanity and get one more point in the AOE veil. So AOE veil is actually very, very nice. Um, I recommend playing with points in here if you want. And as you can see, I also took points out of the duration. I think duration of Profane Veil is absolutely useless because if you always cast a Bone Curse before entering Profane Veil, uh, you'll never have an issue. You always have essentially maximum uptime that you need. So yeah. Um, I took the points out of duration, put into the AOE, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to take these two points out and put one in here to get the max corner reduction and get one in here with an AOE. Because currently, as you can see with the rotation, is that our profane veil will not reset in time for our next rotation. It's about like a one second loss. As you can see here, we have 40 stacks, and now profane veil is not up yet. But if you had that last node, this last cooldown reduction node, you would have a perfect rotation. So yeah, I'm pretty sure I am going to take this and take these two points out right here. You can also take out the AOE and put it in here instead. Um, if you're un unaware, what, the only thing this thing does essentially is 5% more damage because of our Warlock passive tree, a passive bonus. So, but it is two points. So, you know, mess around with what you want. I think the AOE is very, very nice. I think having two points in this is extremely nice for clearing. It's not needed for bosses, but it's very nice for mapping. 5% uh, more damage is good, but it's not necessary. Um, and I think you do want maximum points in here though, which I will change. So yeah, last thing is Transplant. Why I'm playing Transplant over Ghost Flame. So Ghost Flame is pretty strong, but the problem is you don't have time to use this in rotation. And it's why I don't think it's good for this build, uh, specifically for the Ignite variant. If you're playing a different variant, I think it'll be a different uh, case. But for the Ignite variant, I just don't think Ghost Flame is good at all. So like I said, with the rotation, there's no room. 
actually use Ghost Flame, as you can see, if we're playing a boss, right? This is going to be a rotation. You start up again. You get stuff up. Profane Veil. And it's like at most like half a second to use Ghost Flame for DR. And that's it. It's Like I said, it's why I don't think Ghost Flame is good. Because you have no time to actually use it while fighting a boss. Now you can use it for mapping. And it does give you a nice DR for mapping. But once again, like you don't have time to use it when you're going to do your rotation. So yeah, that's why I think Ghost Flame is not that good. Transplant's better. And the major things about Transplant is the movement speed. Uh, the movement speed is unmatched. Ghost Flame can't compare to this. So why is Transplant insane? So if you're unaware of how uh, movement skills work in this game, is essentially they have almost no limit. As long as you can aim your monitor, I mean, aim your mouse off your screen onto another monitor, you can go like insane distance travel. So what do I mean by this? So as you can see right here, if I was to transplant, I'd only go to the middle, right? Like, I can't really go m that much farther um, directly in the middle. But if you have a second monitor, multiple monitors, what you can do is you can aim your mouse off the screen onto your second monitor and then hit transplant and go double the distance, as you can see right there. Uh, yeah, this is why moving skills in this game are absolutely absurd. You can travel such large amounts of distance as long as you have multiple monitors. Now, if you only have one monitor, but you have a widescreen, this still works. But if you only have one monitor and you're not widescreen, you're only 1080p, you won't get that much uh, insane value of transplant. But yeah, I just wanted to mention that. It's why it's really insane, especially for corruption pushing. One thing I've noticed other people have ignored in corruption pushing, you really need to go fast. If you're a slow build and you're not going fast, you're not going to push corruption fast, which is bad. You have to optimize for both movement speed, damage, and defense. If you ignore the movement speed part, you're just going to be pushing corruption so slow. Like, sure, you'll still do it, but you're turning like a, uh, you know, 100 hour grind into like a 200 hour grind. So, yeah, you really, really want movement speed and transplant. Nothing beats this. Also, because transplant gives you essentially permanent haste. You know, haste is a three second duration. And this is a 3.4 second cooldown. So, you're just absolutely, you know, zoom in through maps uh, really, really, really fast. You know, teleporting like two screens away too. So yeah, very, very nice. I think transplant's better than Ghost Flame. And also you do get some nice DR. Uh, the armor plus lush damage taken is very nice. Also on transplant, like I said, you get a 15% coal, 15% kill threshold. This allows you to save the five points in Bone Curse and allows you to get a little bit of extra damage and some also a little bit of extra damage, uh, damage reduction while clearing. So yeah, uh, that's about it for the whole skill tree and builds. I'm gonna go to the planet real quick now just to finish the video. So the stat priority as followed in a fully min-max version is crit multi, then intelligence, then minion life, then necrotic resist. So in a fully min-max version, this is the stat priority. Keep in mind this is fully min-max. If you are not fully min-max, you might need to prioritize minion life a little bit more. I would say vastly heavily prioritize minion life until you get roughly 1300 to 400%, at which case you should prioritize intelligence more with a ward retention. This is why, as you can see my gear, I don't have a tier 7 minion life uh, anywhere but my gloves. And I don't have it in my gloves because it's what I have in my gloves. So, yeah. You want, you know, tier 7 intelligence on your rings. You want tier 7 intelligence on your chest. And you want tier 7 crit multi on your catalyst, your amulet, and your relic. So the only important thing is to mention here, we're going to crit reduction damage cap from our chest in our boots implicit. Um, this gives us essentially 95%. And if you can get the sealed affix for the extra last 5%, do it. But if not, it's not a big deal. 95% is good enough. Um, outside of that, we're stacking, like I said, intelligence, minion life, necrotic res everywhere we can, but we're not doing tier seven minion life. And like I said, the reason for this is because the ward retention, um, you just don't have enough to sustain over 200K. So it instantly goes down. I'll show right here. My minion life is only 1.1K. So keep in mind, if I had it in my planner, 1500%, I'll have even more. So yeah, here's my ward retention currently. And as you can see, you get the 120k ward. So this is like 120k because of the overflow. Now this is about still 120k ward. Now I reach about 180k ward. And you see, it just goes down super fast. This is why I don't think prioritizing tier 7 minion life is necessary because your ward is, is essentially disappearing while in profane veil anyway so you're not even getting any benefit out of it so it's more important in my opinion to get the water retention which is 
gathered from intelligence, which also gives you other benefits like more damage and stuff like that. Cast speed and all that. So yeah. Once again, the priority is tier 7 crit multi, then intelligence, then minion life, then necrotic resist. A necrotic resist is the lowest priority, but that's because you get it everywhere anyway, right? On every single piece, I have necrotic resist because it's a suffix, so it's not really competing with any other affix. And on your helmet, if you're wondering, if you only have a two um, LP bone helmet, just get intelligence and curse stance, in my opinion, um, or curse stance and necrotic resist, whatever you can get, really. But yeah, in my opinion, intelligence is better here. Yeah, on Glows, you want minion life, intelligence, and necrotic resist. Uh, I think ideally you do want tier uh, 7 intelligence, but this is only if I have minion life everywhere. Like I said, even my version right now, I don't even have 1500% minion life because I'm still missing some on my chest and I'm also missing some on my catalyst. But yeah, uh, that's about it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Um, I feel like I've fully been maxed this build. I'm at 7 to corruption with zero issue. I do plan to push this well past 2000. Once again, you know, shout out to the curse for making the original build, but uh, you know, I did find stuff I could improve with this build and that's why I'm making this video. I also get this question a lot on stream since I am doing stuff differently to him. So I thought it would be worth to make a video about it. But yeah, that's about it. I'll link the full planner down below. And I also do stream on Twitch daily. Now I'll be pushing over 2000 corruption. Um, trying to push for the highest solo corruption. We'll see. I don't know who else is a high solo corruption. But yeah.